Today we'll be having a look at and installing the Hydrostar Electric Over Hydraulic Actuator for Disc Brakes, part number HBA-16. All right, so here's what our Hydrostar trailer brake actuator looks like once it's been installed. As you can see, it's a nice compact unit that hardly takes up any space at all. Sits nicely on our battery tray here that our trailer has. This unit will provide us with 1600 PSI of braking pressure to operate our disc brakes. First thing we need to do is find a place to mount our actuator. We have a bracket here that we made mounted on the side of our battery box, so we're going to be using that. We'll secure with some hardware. Okay, so we'll use a wrench and a socket and we'll tighten this down. Just using a bolt and a little nylon lock nut to hold it in place. Okay, now we need to start routing our brake lines to the back of the trailer in order to install everything. We're using the Hydrostar Hydraulic Brake Line Kit for tandem axle trailers. It's 30 feet long with a quarter inch main line. It's part number HS496-252. The kit comes with a fitting right here that goes from 3 sixteenths to a quarter inch diameter for your metal hard line. If you have the ability, you can screw that fitting directly in the back of your actuator. But because of our confined space that we have to mount our actuator, we're using an additional brake hose that we have available on our website. It's 3 16 inch diameter, so it screws directly in the back of our actuator. It has a 90 degree bend. We'll be able to come down about right here. We'll secure it to the side of our trailer with one of the loom clamps that comes with the kit and a self-tapping screw that comes with it as well. This will give us the ability to run our quarter inch line down and towards the rear of our trailer. So we'll just put our self-tapping screw right about here. This will secure our brake hose where we need it. Here's our quarter inch main line. It's 30 feet in length. We'll use this to connect to our hose and we'll run this to the back of our trailer and start making all of our connections. So we'll have our main line screwed into this hose here with the adapter fitting that's and comes with our kit. And once we have it started by hand a few turns, we'll snug it on down and we'll start to secure our brake line underneath our trailer. Okay, we'll hold our fitting in place with a 9 16 wrench and use a 7 16 to tighten the fitting off our quarter inch brake line. With it snug, we can now put a couple more clamps on to hold it in place. Now, any place our brake line comes around a metal edge like this, I went ahead and wrapped it with some uh, rubber hose we have laying around just to help protect the line. This will keep it from getting chafed from vibrations going down the road. Okay, we're going to start routing our quarter inch line all the way to the back of our trailer. It'll stop towards the driver's side of our first axle. So our quarter inch brake line went down from our brake hose fall back down. We secured it about every other cross rail on our frame with some uh, loom clamps. We have some available on our website in case you run out with the ones that come with the kit. Every time that we don't have a loom clamp, I put some wire loom over it. So in case when you're running down the road, your brake line is not gonna make direct contact with the frame and chafe a hole in it. So we have two of those in a row. Another loom clamp, put some more loom where it comes across the propane lines for our trailer. Another loom clamp. We went around our wastewater tank. Some loom clamp over the valves and underneath the rail. Loom clamp there. Some more wire loom to protect it. Loom clamp here. Then we ended right in front of our front axle. Have a clamp here. We bundled up the excess here in a couple loops secured it to the frame rail with some more of the wire loom clamps. As you can see, I put some loom around it to protect it so where it wraps around itself, they're not gonna chafe against each other. Now we'll start attaching all our brake hoses into our calipers. Tighten those down with a 3 8 wrench. Once you have them tight on all four, we'll start making our connections to our quarter inch brake line. We'll go ahead and do that and we'll show you how we did it once we're done. 
Okay, once we have those snug, we'll repeat the same process for the other three and we'll make the rest of our connections. Okay, our quarter inch brake line goes into a 316 step down. We have another one of those on our website. It's part number HS641-3307. And from that, it goes into our four-way adapter. So here's our four-way adapter. Goes over to our left front brake hose here. And one of our short segments of hose back to our rear axle. And then our six foot long segment over here to the other side of our front axle. From here it goes into a three-way fitting with our brake hose for our right front caliper and then back into another segment that goes back to our rear axle where it goes into a union and our right rear caliper brake hose. We'll go look at the uh, left rear caliper brake hose now and you can see how it's set up. So just like on the right hand side from our four-way here though, versus our three-way, we have a short segment of brake line, goes back to another union, to our left rear brake hose, and we secured everything along the way with the included loom clamps to make sure it's not gonna rattle or chafe any metal. Now we're gonna be installing a Hydrostar electric over hydraulic actuator adapter module for Ford and Chevy brake controllers. It's part number HBA-CAM. You need to use this if you have a factory brake controller in your Ford or Chevy truck. Okay, we found a place to uh, mount our actuator module here. We're just gonna put it on the side of our battery box here next to our actual actuator itself, the hydraulic actuator, because the wires will tie together with it. I have it clamped to here right now just to hold it in place while I secure it with some self-tapping screws. Okay, with our module securely mounted, we can move on to our electrical connections now. Okay, our two white wires, the one off this module and the one off the actuator, will be tied together and we'll insert them into a yellow heat shrink butt connector that we have. We have these available on our website. And we'll crimp it on down. Make sure that's nice and secure. And we'll do the same thing with our blue wires. Now all of our connections that we're making from our Hydrostar units are going to our trailer's junction box right here. The white wires are ground. Black wire here is our positive 12 volt that comes from our tow vehicle and our trailer's breakaway battery. Our blue wire here is our output signal from our uh, tow vehicle's brake controller. And this will connect our blue wire and our Hydrostar unit. We just tie everything in right here. Makes a real simple and easy connection. So we'll take some extra 12 gauge blue wire that we have laying around. Again, something that's available for purchase at a website if you need some. So we have some of the insulation stripped off. We'll insert it into the end of our butt connector that goes to our blue wires, and we'll crimp it on down. We'll do the same for a white wire. Again, we have some extra 12 gauge wire. Strip off the end of our white wire, and we'll insert it, crimp it down. Now we'll take a extended piece of yellow wire and we'll connect it to the other yellow wire. Now we'll extend our black wire. Now we shrink down our heat shrink butt connectors I'm using a small butane horde and applying indirect heat, not the flame itself. All right, now once you have all of our heat shrink butt connectors shrunk down, this clear liquid starts to come out the back of them and the end of it wraps tight around a wire, we know we have a good connection. I'm just gonna wrap our butt connectors in some electrical tape here for a little bit extra security. Okay, we bundled up our two segments of wire here with some electrical tape so there's no loose ends hanging. Now we're gonna stick some wire loom on it and we'll route it to the front of our junction box and make our connections. Once we have that done, we'll show you how we did it. Okay, so we just wrapped all of our wiring up and wiring loom, followed along our battery box tray, secured it to the bulkhead of our trailer, 
and then brought it up in the loom, securing it to the crossbars of our frame, bringing it up to where our junction box is right here, where we can make our connections. We'll start by taking off this crimp connector here. We'll reconnect that outside of this box and we'll remove the blue wire that goes to our junction box for our breakaway. Okay. Take the blue wire off. This goes to our breakaway switch. Pull out this wire loom here. We'll disconnect these orange wires completely and we'll pull them outside of this grommet and we'll pull our blue wire out from our breakaway here too. And we'll reinstall our grommet back in there. Okay. Okay, we'll take our blue wire that we brought up here. We'll go through this grommet like so. Same with our white wire and our black wire. We disconnect all the wiring loom that went from our breakaway battery into our control box up here. These are our two orange wires that we have. We're gonna shorten these up a little bit and reconnect them with the heat shrink bug connector. That way we have plenty of room to get inside our junction box. Now the blue wire that comes off of our pre-existing breakaway switch is our cold side of the breakaway switch. We need to connect that. This is the wire removed from the junction box to our yellow wire. So we'll cut off our excess wire and we'll strip them both back. And we'll install them into a yellow muck connector. Okay. Now we'll measure off how much blue wire we're gonna need. We connect to the blue wire that goes to the connector that connects to our towing vehicle. Strip off some insulation. And we'll install a ring terminal it's a yellow ring terminal for 10 to 12 gauge wire. We have these available for purchase on our website if you need some. Crimp that on down. And we'll reinstall it over this stud here. Reinstall the nut. And we'll tighten it on down. We'll do the same for our black wire now. This will go to the black terminal right here. Rip that back. This will supply power to our actuator. Reinstall our nut. And we'll tighten the nut on down. Okay, now we'll measure off how much we need for our white wire, which is our ground wire. Place another one of those ring terminals on. Remove the nut from our white terminal here for our ground. Place that on. And install the nut. Okay, with our electrical connections made, we'll heat shrink the buck connectors that we added. And we're just gonna wrap our buck connectors up with electrical tape here. It's for extra layer security, because this is a somewhat exposed part of our trailer. Okay, with all of our electrical connections made, we can now fill up our reservoir of brake fluid. Unscrew the cap. Make sure we're using a fresh sealed container brake fluid and we'll fill it up whoop that's full put our cap back on make sure the cap is closed which it is so now that we have all our connections made and our reservoir filled with fluid we'll take our bleeder cap off here on our actuator we'll install a clear hose over our bleeder screw here, and we'll have this going down into a bucket to catch our fluid. Now, 
We can actuate our brakes a couple different ways. We can have someone operate a brake control inside of our truck, or we can pull our breakaway switch. So we'll do that. We'll open up our bleeder and make sure that we have clean fluid coming out with no air bubbles. Okay, we'll close our bleeder screw. Once we make sure we have no air bubbles coming out, take our hose off here. We'll make sure our brake fluid is still full, place our cap on our bleeder screw, and then we'll begin the process of bleeding our brakes, starting at the one furthest away from the actuator. All right, now we'll take our 7 16 wrench. We're on the right rear brake caliper. Stick on the bleeder screw. All right, you may note that there's two different sections of our bleeder screw. There's a larger 7 16 and a smaller 5 16 We'll be working with the 5 16 here today. Place our wrench on it. Have our assistant operator breakaway switch. And we'll open it. Hear the air come out. Close it. Open it again. See, we got fluid coming out. We'll shut this once we don't see any air bubbles coming out. That should be good. We'll go ahead and shut that. We'll move on to the next furthest away wheel from our actuator. Okay, no air bubbles, we'll close it. Okay, now that our two wheels on our passenger side are bled, and these are the ones that are furthest from the actuator, we'll go repeat the same process on the driver's side until we don't see any air bubbles come out of the bleeder screw. Okay, so once we're all four of them bled, we'll check underneath our trailer at all of our fittings and connections, make sure we don't see any leaks. If we don't see any leaks, we're good to go. Put our wheels back on, and we can go take it for a spin and see how the brakes work. I just want to point out though, you may notice that there are two bleeder screws on your caliper. So when you're bleeding your brakes, make sure you bleed from the top brake bleeder on all four of your calipers. If you use from the bottom, you won't get all the air out of the system. And that completes our look at and our installation of the Hydrostar Electric Over Hydraulic Actuator for disc brakes, part number HBA16. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.